Carlos Nelson with Cascade Media Group. And today uh, we are on our arts and entertainment channel. And I was trying to figure out how to say this, but I'm gonna give this young lady her props. Uh, Miss Janice Thatcher, uh, I was like, do I announce her as co-founder of What's Up Wichita? Because that is one of our networks. And I was saying, did she co-found that or did she? Uh, but I, in my mind, because I really, you the one that brought that channel to life, I would consider that as a co-founder. And uh, that's what I uh, give you your props. Like I, I'm always telling my artists and my athletes to give the props to the people that help you get where you at. And there wouldn't, this show and the artists and, and the people that we bought on from Wichita wouldn't have, wouldn't have happened without you. And so I want to acknowledge that before we even get into uh, our interview with you. And the interview that I'm doing with you, uh, I want to say is uh, different from the interviews that I've done with your previous artists, because I, I want to talk about you now, uh, who you are, uh, your educational background, uh, some of the things that uh, you've been involved with over the last uh, half a century. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce you to uh, someone that I have a great amount of respect, especially during Black History Month and the projects and the people that uh, Miss Janice Thatcher has pushed uh, in our community and given a foothold to get uh, more exposure for what they're doing. And as I said, without further ado, Miss Janice Thatcher. How you doing, Janet? Oh, I'm excited and it's been fun and I'm doing okay. Hey, Janice, really uh, don't spare anything. Go back from the beginning, from your childhood. Okay, I was born in Boley, Oklahoma, which was an all black town. And until age three, I had freedom to to go to stores, see black businesses, see black leaders. So when we moved to Wichita, it was a shock because- of Give us I some years, give us some dates. Oh, because okay. You, well, and and all of that. I want this to be, like I said, not like what they, uh, the other artists, give us some dates. Talk about the atmosphere, uh, the racial atmosphere, uh, uh, the redlining or, or whatever. Give us your story. Okay, well, coming out of Boley, Oklahoma on the bus, we stopped at a place where you can get food and the bus, bus had to get gas. This was in 45, 1945. So I was looking for a place to eat. So I went inside the restaurant and sat at the counter. And my mother was looking everywhere. So when she found me, the white man said, you can't sit at this counter. So she'll have to go around to the mop room. And they had a little counter there. That's where I could eat. And when my mother what saw was it she, called? It was a you mop go, room. You said you had to go around the what? Right around the corner to the mop room where they call the mop for the restaurant. Restaurant, okay? All right. So when my mother saw that, she said, you're not eating in here. So we got up back on the bus and I told my mother, you know I'm still hungry. She just <laughs> shook her head. I didn't know what danger we were in. So because in Boley, Oklahoma, I had free reigns. All the grownups looked after the children. So when I got to Wichita, my mom and I, uh, she had to work two jobs. So I lived in Phyllis Wheatley Children's Home. While my mother was working two jobs, I'd be hanging on the fence, crying every time I would see her go to work. So the, the ladies in the children's home said, well, you know, she likes to draw and she likes to do something. So they always had me in the newspaper at age three. They had me doing something all the time. So when I started school, at Dunbar Elementary School in the kindergarten, my mother had me on the stage dancing by myself. So she must have felt I was confident to do things. Next, we went to making puppet shows for the school. And I put on puppet shows. When I got to the fifth grade, then I was doing murals for the school. So my mother would take me every Sunday after church to visit this 
black artist house in the neighborhood. She had a huge picture window and she always had black art. So that's where my mother was a major support in how I view art and being involved. If she bought a piano because she wanted me to play the piano. She took me to tapping lessons because I wanted to dance. So I had a life of being involved. Middle school, this is central. Uh, middle school, I was about 57, 57, 58, 59, somewhere in there. Then I was making jewelry and selling at lunchtime. What kind of jewelry were you making? Copper, you know, like copper wire, copper wire jewelry. And then I got a chance to go to Detroit, Michigan, and I learned how to do the Detroit chicken. So I was selling dancing lessons at lunchtime. It's like, I didn't never get through that. <laughs> but my teachers always let me, because I wanted to do something extra, they always let me come in and work. So now we're in high school. Okay, so in high school, my art teachers let me do some extra projects so I can make some money. But I, so I painted sets for the drama department. My friends and I, I always encouraged them. And that's the first time I had seen a swimming pool. So I had a shower too. So I took my soap to school so I could take my showers at school. We didn't have a shower at home. We just had a tub. I didn't know at that time that they only let the black kids swim on the last day of the week. And then they would drain the water out so the white students could come in and swim during the week. Boy. Yeah, that holiday. See, uh, with this being Black History Month, a lot of our youth, they don't, they have a clue, but they really don't have a clue to what it was like in the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s uh, for people of color uh, in the educational system and just in our own neighborhoods. And uh, you all close up there in Oklahoma where uh, they were burning down black neighborhoods and and things that uh, p blacks that were trying to achieve uh, the American dream. And uh, it seemed like you, uh, a lot of that was happening right there in Wichita. Well, my, I would say my experience is a little different because my mother built, she moved two houses. She bought two houses and moved them across town. I'm living in one of the houses now. But somehow she knew how to buy land and move houses. So when I talked to Mr. McCormick, who was from Boley, Oklahoma, I asked him, how did this all black town grow so fast? He said they were moving whole houses in on trains. So my mother had to have had that experience because we never just moved in a house. She always bought the land. Then she moved the house. This was a single black woman. All right. So now uh, let's talk about, did you go to college? Yes, I went to Wichita State. I have a bachelor's in art education. And then I went to Emporia State for a master's in uh, art education. And then I got certified in counseling K through 12. But let me tell you how it worked. After I finished college, I taught at Truesdale, which was a, the largest school in the state of Kansas. Then I went to White Plains, New York, and I got a job there teaching art. But the students there could go down to the city, the seniors, and they could work with professional people. And we were still working until we get out of college to work. So we were behind. When I went to, had a chance to go to Camaso, Italy, I was on a military base. So the, uh, the professional artists came to the middle schools and selected those students who were going to go with them to do professional work. And I said, why don't we catch up? So that's how this whole project, project got started. Art that touches your heart. We're trying to help the kids bridge that gap and go right into competition. What, what are you doing or what have you done over the uh, past? Uh, how long have you been retired, first of all? I retired in 2005 from Blue Valley North, Oakland Park, Kansas. All right, so tell me what kind of uh, projects or what were you doing when you were working with our youth, our high school age youth? What type of oh. things? And uh, tell, tell our audience, uh, because it's Black History Month, how you feel uh, students of color uh, looked at, uh, from your perspective, looked at uh, engaging in art and pursuing art as a career? Well, there's two different things you're asking me. One is, what have I been doing? 
And when I was in as a counselor, I had a modeling club. I had a black awareness club. I always sponsored the senior class or the junior class or whatever it was. And so at our modeling club at East High School, we had 320 some students that were in the club. Everybody had to get up and work. So that we stopped, we got clothing from the stores. And I told the students, you may not like this outfit, but this does not belong to you. Do not throw it on the floor. I love it. You, okay. you know how <laughs> yes, you know how we do. And so <laughs> you have you hold it, you set the rules and regulations. You want to participate, this is what it's gonna take. Right. All right. So we were the uh, only off camera, oh, we had talked uh I think it was a week before uh uh, last month, and you told me that you had a nonprofit. Yes, which I wasn't aware of. Talk about what that nonprofit does. Okay, that's the art that touches your heart, where we bring artwork from the students and combine it with professional black artists. And so Melvin didn't come, but he usually does the jewelry for us. We laser Wichita State WSU on it. Art that touches your heart. Black Lives Matter, so that students can keep up. They're tired of paper. Handing out papers, they're tired of that. But I talked to one of the teachers in the summer. She said her daughter get on there every morning and put that bracelet on. Uh, so that's that's our nonprofit that we talk, bring. Talk, in. talk about your. Uh, every time I talk to you about uh, any type of project, it seems like you got some type of relationship up there at that college because. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. Talk about that and. Okay. I was on the president's um, diversity council. So I was the community connection to the university. So I did that for five years. Because I know you brought some people on uh, the last five years to talk about Wichita State. And it's like, just like you give them praise, it seemed like you're not afraid to criticize it. Most people are not like that when they have a benefactor. They just want to talk about the sweet and sugary things. But... That well, hasn't I don't, been your MO. Okay, well, my philosophy is we've had 400 years to learn how to hate each other. And as now it's time for us to learn how to work together. So that's why I support your program, because that's what you're bringing together to the forefront. Yeah, uh, you know me, block voting, group economics, who's responsible for that? And the things that uh, matter to uh, people of color or that should is the law, because the law is what have us redlined, what has us out uh, not having a seat at the table. But if we use our block vote and our group economics, there's not a table we can't sit at because we can be the determining factor on anything on this globe when we work together as people of color. Right. And uh, now I want to go a uh, quick step into another what is your particular, because you're an artist in your own right, what is the genre that you uh, work in? Okay, my style of painting is called negative space because I start with a black canvas. Because most of the time, America does not see us until they need us, even though we are constructively working the whole time behind the scenes. Well, that's the first. Boy, that's hell of a, I got to steal that. You got <laughs> oh, there's no doubt I'm gonna steal that black canvas. They can't see us, baby, but we here. Yeah. Oh, you're so clever. No wonder I like you so much. <laughs> As my lawyer Carl Bussy said, and his his daddy was the first black mayor of Little Rock. How black of you? <laughs> Well, Frank Frazier, my mentor out of Dallas, Texas, his philosophy is, you know, help one to teach one. But I learned a lot from him from being on the road. When I retired in 2005, I became a road artist for seven years. So sleeping on the floors at 65 is not fun, okay? Starving artists, baby. That's how we do it. Okay, but let me tell you, these artists were not starving. They were telling our stories. I never seen so much Black art until I was on the road with Frank Frazier. What did you think, because you know I'm from New York, and you said you was up in White Plains, and my brother and them, they lived up there, and, uh, you know, Stony Brook, and, and up there in Westchester. How do you see the people uh, view art, and 
in the different parts of the country, black people, I'm saying, what do you do you think that we have a uh, a pension for or do you think that our community even uh, care? Give me your assessment of. It's, it's like an awakening. They're not they're not there yet. The professional people are there. OK, but we're trying to bring up some emerging artists so that they can capture the tone. And because they're telling a new story, they're telling the story that they're tired. We're telling the story that we're putting up with it, okay? So the whole genre has changed. But in White Plains, when I was up there in 73, I had never seen black students tell off administrators, tell them to get off the stage because the kids were coming out. The African dancers were coming out. Tell them to get off the stage. We want to see the kids. I had never, coming from Kansas, we didn't dare say anything to administrators that we were grown people. Did did you get a chance to uh, visit any of the schools in the city, like Julian? You know the art schools, no. and 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 what have you? No, no. I just students who were going to they were applying to go to Juilliard. The girl who was in, in charge of African dance, she was applying to go to Juilliard. But when I saw the black uh, the students would teach the high school students would teach the elementary kids how to do African dance, they would come in with all folded up material. And when they got through, everybody had a costume. So I said, can I help? They said, do you know how to make a costume? I said, no. They said, no, thank you. All right. So what, what are you doing currently now? <laughs> well, currently, I'm trying to finish up Bowley, Oklahoma. I got 300 illustrations that tell the town, tell the story of this all-Black city. There were two Black cities in this country, Mount Bayou, Mississippi, and Bowley, Oklahoma. So with the Historical Society, they have newspapers from 1905. So I'm trying to put together an art show for that. All right. And, and when do you uh, anticipate that being complete? I'm hoping by May because they have a big rodeo every May. So that's what I want to sell my T-shirts, my hats and my canvases at the rodeo. So uh, do you have some art uh, being displayed at this uh, uh, current uh, exhibition? Yes, I have a piece that has like 12 canvases in it, and it's called Ninth in Cleveland. This is where I grew up with Dunbar School, and then we had the uh, Black Movie Theater, uh, we had Black Stores, and then where we went, the park we went to, it's all included, and but now it's almost decimated except for the movie theater. Then I have another section called Brown versus... These are Board. pieces that we're going to, uh, we have JPEGs yeah. of, all right, Talk about it. Okay, and then Brown versus the Board of Education starts out with the Century Two in Wichita, Kansas, and then it takes you all the way to the Capitol, and uh, the governor signed the last piece on the Capitol. All right. So see the different segments. What does it mean to get on the school bus? That means there's a whole different education that nobody's given out a diploma for. Just getting to school. We start out with the mother and the son, that first day of school, you know how you get new clothes for the first day of school? Okay, he has a lollipop in his hand, he's on his way. Then Wichita State was, um, at that, I painted in 2014, they were winning 27 to zero in basketball. Then we have the arts included, and then along the bottom, I have a patterns from the Underground Railroad on their clothes, and this is a direction on how people knew how to safe, and when it was time to go, it was time to hide. Boy, you're a treasure trove of information. You know, uh, I know that you've been patient dealing with me because I know I'm a character, but <laughs> uh, I, I love you, Janice, because you always just listen. You will listen, and the, those qualities uh, I think have served you well, and through those qualities, you've served our community uh, well, and especially our youth, because our youth is our future. That's what Frank Frazier says all the time, let the youth do it. Yeah, well, in closing, uh, how about you telling our people uh, how they can contact you and how they can purchase some of your uh, artwork? Well, we have a, our nonprofit has a website and it's A-T-T-Y-H dot O-R-G. All so right. They can profit and they can see. And my phone number is 
5224431. And you have to call me by cell phone. But I want to say And don't this. call unless you're going to spend some money. <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah, I'm, no, they, they, I'm the only one they jaw jack with. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, by now, I usually say I'm collect, taking up a donation and I'm collecting dimes. Because when you have a dime, you have a piece of black artwork done by Dr. Selma Birch. I'm stealing that, too. <laughs> I got no shame, baby. <laughs> and 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 hold it and you know what uh i'm going to be bringing that uh up during black history month i've seen some things on her uh with the mint with the dime and her picture and what have you and i don't think that our community again communications is aware of the greatness and that uh, the contributions that we've made to this country. Right, right. They, 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 they're, they're right up under the surface. And so right. I, I, I'm, I'm so glad that, that you're bringing that to the surface. Okay, so, what I do is I have a sheet and then we laminate dimes and we put them under plates when we have banquets because you know, sometimes kids think they know everything. And you say, look under your look under your cup or look under your plate. I didn't know that. I said, that's where we got you. All right. Hey Janice, I'm stealing Jim. I only steal Jim Watts's uh closing on special things. Uh Watts always closed. It was a plum pleasing pleasure having you on the show. And so okay. I steal his opening. And then when he looks at my show, he'd be like, why you use my opening? Why? You? <laughs> but we're going <laughs> to, I dare him to steal mine. Uh, as we always close, when you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself. Good night. This is brought to you by the Black Economic Union, located at 1601. East 18th Street, Kansas City, Missouri.